Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. In this episode, Dr. Lauren Schachner will share some highlights and clinical pearls regarding the current and emerging atopic dermatitis treatments for pediatric patients. Welcome, Dr. Schachner. Thank you, Lindsay. Dr. Schachner, can you share some advice for dermatologists on communicating with parents and caretakers of pediatric AD patients regarding treatment options and at-home interventions? Well, that is a really big area for discussion. We could probably do a whole interview on that, but how about a few pearls? Pearl number one, no handout with instructions equals no compliance. There are just too many things we're giving to atopic families for them to get it right unless you have it in writing. If you're giving a topical steroid, a topical calcineurin inhibitor, an antihistamine, an antibiotic, no one's gonna get it straight unless it's in writing. So in my talks and in my practice, I use instructional handout and I showed it at the Masters of Pederm and I welcome everybody to use it. I also use a ladder approach because you don't stop treating atopic dermatitis. You do less and less and less as the patient gets better and better. You may get down just to emollients twice a day, but you always have to be doing something to help protect the barrier and help your atopic patient. So a treatment lattice, so the patient knows what they're going to be doing at the end of the first week, the second week, and the second month. My ladder goes out six months. Dupilumab is currently approved for patients with atopic dermatitis age six years and older. Do you foresee dupilumab being approved for even younger patients in the near future? So dupilumab is to atopic dermatitis what isotretinoin was to cystic acne. It is the baseball bat. It's the wow. And uh, it makes a major difference in these poor kids with moderate to severe disease. And there's so many atopics. It's estimated that 25% of children have atopic diatheses and about 30% of those go on to have it in adolescence. It's a long-term problem. So very grateful that we have the first monoclonal antibody, dupilumab, now available down to six years of age. There have been studies going on down to six months of age. And just after the master's, there was a publication in the European uh, Journal of Dermatology and Venereology uh, in uh, February, looking at a study, safety, but also efficacy, down to six months of age, and it looked good. So it is my hope that on those occasions where we need this wow drug, for severe, moderate to severe atopic dermatitis, unresponsive to conventional therapy, we may have it for our two-year-old or three-year-old, and even rarely for the one-year-old if we need it there. How do emerging JAK inhibitors fit into the existing treatment landscape for pediatric patients with atopic dermatitis? So there's a lot of research going on on JAK1 and JAK2 inhibitors. And several of them uh, have received, including abrocitinib and upadacitinib, have received breakthrough designation from the FDA because it looks like they potentially could be just that. Uh, We see them as another very important arrow in our quiver of weaponry, our armamentarian against this difficult disease. Because sometimes kids may have some issues, for example, with dupilumab also, such as conjunctivitis or a local site reaction or parents being reticent to inject a smaller child. So it's good now to have oral JAK inhibitors coming in the pipeline. But very interestingly, Lindsay, there's been research on one of them, ruxolitamib, in which it's been used as a cream. And the cream seems to be uh, certainly more effective than its vehicle, but also as effective as triencimolone a medium potency agent that we use frequently. So there may be some very special places, both orally and topically for this great new class of medications for atopic dermatitis. And final thought, Dr. Schachner, is there anything additional that you would like to share? I really look forward to sharing the 30th annual Masses of Pediatric Dermatology with all my old friends and with new friends to be made. We would love if we could be back together live. It's, it's my hope uh, that uh, February 10th for a gala 30th anniversary of the master's meeting that as many of our friends can join us live and also virtually if need be. 
uh, at a 30th Mass as a Pediatric Dermatology meeting. Right now scheduled for February 10th and 11th in South Florida. See you there. Thank you so much for sharing your insight with us today, Dr. Schachner. Lindsay, it was a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you to all of our listeners. Until next time.